Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with a slightly different type of video, highlighting some great changes we can see to the user interface between the first and second game. As somebody with a personal interest in user experience and interface design, I know that user experience design is like editing. If it's well done, it goes by unnoticed. So I wanted to bring attention to these small quality of life changes that are actually a big deal in my mind and worth highlighting. Some you may have already seen, but hopefully there's something new in here for everybody. Also, I apologize if the title comes across as clickbait in any way. Never know when I'm taking a risk, but yeah. Here are some great, small, but big changes to the user interface you may have missed. You won't believe number two. First up, a great help to anybody who intends to play a campaign and suffers a common issue when your territories expand and your forces grow more numerous. The end turn button now takes you to unfinished business rather than serving you a pop-up that tells you what you missed one line at a time or simply not showing you that an entire army of yours is sitting without orders. Clicking end turn will take you to an unmoved lord, any unassigned skill points, damaged buildings that can be repaired, and other things that require your attention. This is a system that you'll find in other turn-based strategy games and helps keep things organized and I'm glad it's made its way into Total War. I imagine the little cogwheel icon to the right of the end turn button is to specify what you do and don't want to see notifications like this for, which is always good. Customization is always necessary, especially as somebody who loves leaving buildings in a state of disrepair in the middle of war, I won't mind getting those less often. Another one for the campaign map is this little percentage indicator you can see at the bottom left corner over here. A very major complaint that many brought up and quite fairly I have to say was that while little quarter indicators were nice, there should simply be a numerical indicator of movement points. Since the various stances express required movement points in percentages, it makes sense to show this number in percentages. As of now, the number only shows up if you're clicking and dragging the command around the map, and it gives you a chance to adjust the movement distance so you're able to change stances afterward. For example, you can pop into stalking stance if you remember to keep 15% of your movement range in reserve. Now 15% is hard to spot with just quarter markers, so instead now, you can look at the numbers. The campaign map overlays are also a nice addition, allowing us to see much more information directly on the interactive, detailed map of the world. By pressing spacebar, this little pop-up menu comes out from the right, like it does on the battlefield, and allows us to see everything from ownership to wealth to climate, winds of magic and corruption, allowing proper planning for military maneuvers without having to zoom out into the overview map which, again, no longer exists in its old form. I think this will make players, or at least myself, more likely to use the information as a tool. Tabbing to a different view to understand how the winds of magic are flowing or where corruption is at its strongest or weakest feels like going to a different screen and like extra effort. Now the information is at our fingertips and as such is much more likely to be acted upon. One thing I'd actually like to see included as an overlay is ambush efficiency. Surely somebody familiar with the lay of the land will be familiar with where an ambush is more or less likely. Having an ambush overlay would force players to be more careful about taking direct paths if the AI were to ambush more often, while it would also allow us to plot our ambushes beforehand without having to hover over ambush areas with the right click held down like we have to do currently. Yet another big one from the campaign map, you can now see exactly what your various agents are capable of doing. Now this was originally spotted by a Reddit user, Ayasta, so make sure to check out the original thread on Reddit that I've linked to down below in the description. This one is pretty huge as far as communication of information is concerned. No longer do you have to wonder exactly what your strangely named agents are good for in various scenarios. The unit card on the campaign map just tells you and correlates cleanly with the skill tree. I mean seriously, how am I supposed to know what a banshee does? Unobtrusively designed and telling you the exact skill level of the agent at hand for each of the tasks they can perform, this change, in my opinion, will make agents less daunting for new players, whether to the game as a whole or to a specific faction. And now we can get more wildly named agents without having to worry about not knowing what they're meant to do. The end turn phase has also been improved significantly. For one, we now have much prettier and more clear indicators of the ability to fast forward these bits. It was perhaps not clear to everybody, but pressing spacebar allows you to speed up the campaign map movement animations, including your own, and now we've got a fast forward button. We also have a lot more information presented during this end turn phase. Apart from simply watching the AI move its forces, you can now control exactly what you do and don't see this button here by the way. We also learn about diplomatic status and how we compare in terms of military and economic strength. It's nice to have these added bits of information 
making the end turn screens far more valuable than before. Seeing units move around and armies move around is only so helpful, but now you can quickly review your relationship status with other factions as maybe they're starting to creep some armies towards your territories. Now this next one is a change I'd really like to see retroactively implemented into the first game if at all possible. On the campaign map or on the battlefield, the unit card now tells you if the unit you're looking at is large or small, or regular sized I guess. Very unobtrusive and very quick to read, this is extremely helpful when you don't have the size of units memorized or if you're having a hard time distinguishing between, say, a big dinosaur from a little one. Seriously, where would you draw the line? An excellent way to communicate a simple but crucial detail, and it allows commanders to respond appropriately to incoming enemy forces by adjusting lines and formations as required. This has been a repeated criticism for the game, and it's great to see the response not only be an improvement, but one that is well done and nuanced. And finally, another priceless addition to the battlefield, the Troops Are Rallying indicator is absolutely great. Those of you that watch my battle videos will know I love pointing out when troops are standing around looking pretty. Now you are less likely to fall victim to that when we all inevitably forget troops that were routing off in the outskirts of a battle completely useless. When these routing troops decide they're willing to dive back into the fray, not only will the unit card have a giant horn flash over top of it to let you know exactly what is back in the fight, but you will receive a notification under the minimap and a little icon telling you exactly where on the battlefield this rallying unit is. Battles that go down to the wire will change with this small addition, as fewer commanders will now leave behind troops that were perfectly willing to fight. With a ton of footage coming out this past week, I thought it'd be nice to put together this list of changes we're already able to see that are going to make a world of difference. The Warhammer games are looking like some of the best Total War user interfaces we've seen, and I'm happy to see it get honed beyond aesthetics. It's easy to rest on one's laurels, but it's important to improve all aspects, because that's what being a great general is about. As always, for more Total War content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. The Magic Guide is being updated and completed, fitting the Norska update, and as you've already seen, the battles and campaigns are back as well. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, cheers.